a normal distribution is a bell curve that describes the behavior of a particular type of stochastic variable. Normally distributed stochastic variables can take on any value that are typically found around the center of the distribution. Statisticians make frequent use of the normal distribution because it describes many stochastic processes that are found in nature. For example, if you grab a pile of dry sand and drop it through your hand, the sand will fall and form a mountain. That mountain of sand is shaped like a normal distribution. People's heights tend to be normally distributed. The sizes of gravel tend to be normally distributed. When you throw darts at a dartboard and the darts make holes in the board, the holes end up being normally distributed. So the normal distribution is useful because it describes so many processes that occur naturally. By understanding the normal distribution, we can predict the behavior of stochastic variables that are normally distributed. For example, suppose we want to determine the potential market for a line of clothing that caters to college students that are particularly tall or particularly short. We know that there are 20 million college students in the United States. What we don't know is what heights these students are. So what we can do is take a random sampling of students and measure their heights. We can then arrange their heights in a histogram. This shows us the number of students that are in each of various heights. In this sample, we have 25 students. If we divide the number of students of each height by 25, we get the percentage of students at each height. For example, in this sample, 4% of the students are 56 inches tall, 20% of the students are 64 inches tall. So we know that there are 20 million college students in the United States. 4% of the students in our sample were 56 inches tall. So we can estimate that 4% of all college students are 56 inches tall. That's 800,000 students. Now, as long as our sample is truly random, this approach is adequate. On average, we'll get approximately the right number of students at each height. But we could do a lot better. Our sample is disturbing for a couple of reasons. According to this sample, none of our students are 57 inches tall, nor were there any students who were 67, 68, or 71 inches tall. So given this sample that we have, we have no way of estimating the number of students nationwide who have these heights. Also disturbing, our sample shows the same number of students who are 69, 70, and 72 inches tall. This doesn't make sense because the taller students are, the fewer students there should be. In other words, nationwide, I would expect to see fewer students who are 72 inches tall than I see students who are 69 or 68 inches tall. Also, our sample stops at 72 inches. Certainly, there are college students who are taller than 72 inches. There are also college students who are shorter than 56 inches. But no one in our sample was taller than 72 or shorter than 56. So this simple approach we use to estimate the number of college students of various heights starts to break down if our sample is not representative of the numbers of students nationwide at each height. We can improve our estimate by taking account of another piece of information. And that other piece of information is that the heights of college students are normally distributed. Knowing that the heights of students are normally distributed, we can take this sample and overlay on top of it a normal distribution. Now the question is, what normal distribution do we overlay? Normal distributions can have high means or low means. They can have large standard deviations or small standard deviations. The normal distribution we want to overlay on our sample is the normal distribution that has the same mean and the same standard deviation that our sample has. When we find this normal distribution, we now have a more sophisticated approach to estimating the number of students of various heights. And that more sophisticated approach is to use the normal distribution instead of the sample. For example, in our sample of college students, the average height is 63.48 inches and the standard deviation is 3.64 inches. If we take a normal distribution that has a mean of 63.48 and a standard deviation of 3.64, we can ask the question, what is the area under the normal distribution in various locations? 
the area under the normal distribution tells us the percentage of students who have these various heights for example suppose i want to know what percentage of college students are fifty six inches tall or shorter there's nobody like that in my sample but if i look at the normal distribution i can find the area under the normal distribution from fifty six and below so notice that we've gone through a two step process here the first step was to take our sample of students and calculate the average and the standard deviation for that sample. The second step is to find the normal distribution that has that same average and standard deviation. Once we have this normal distribution, we now ask questions about it. What we see is that the area from 56 inches and below under this normal distribution is 2%. So we could estimate then that if there are 20 million students in the United States, 2% of these, or 400,000 students, would be 56 inches tall or shorter. Similarly, we can ask how many students are 72 inches tall or taller. The area under the normal distribution from 72 inches and above is 1%. If there are 20 million college students, 1% of that is 200,000. So we estimate that there are 200,000 students who are 72 inches tall or taller. Now the question is, how do we come up with these areas that are under this normal distribution? There's a function in Excel we can use called norm.dist. Norm.dist takes four arguments. The first argument is the value you want to examine, in this case, the height of the student. The second argument is the mean of the sample that you're using. The third is the standard deviation of the sample. And the fourth is simply the word true. This function returns the area under the normal distribution from the left up to the value that you're examining. For example, to find the area under the normal distribution from the left up to a height of 56 inches. In Excel, you enter the function norm.dist, 56 inches, which is the height that we're examining, 63.48, which is the average for our sample, 3.64, which is the standard deviation for our sample, and then the word true. Excel then returns an area of 2%. So the area from the left up to 56 is 2%. To find the area from 72 inches and above, we use the norm.dist function and enter 72. That's the height that we're examining. The sample mean, 63.48. The standard deviation, 3.64, and the word true. The function returns a value of 99%. Now remember, the function is designed to return the area from the left up to the value that you're examining. So the area from the left up to 72 is 99%. This means that the area from 72 and above is 1%. Now suppose we want to find the proportion of students who are between 60 inches and 62 inches tall. To find this, we use the norm.dist function to measure the area from the left up to 62 inches. That area is 34%. We then use the norm.dist function to measure the area from the left up to 60 inches. That area is 17%. So the area that we're concerned with is the difference between those two, 34% minus 17% or 17%. So we conclude that 17% of students are between 60 and 62 inches tall. So the question we're trying to answer here is what percentage of students are of various heights? And we use two approaches. In the simple approach, we looked only at the sample of college students. In this sample, 4% of the students were 56 inches tall. So in the simple approach, we would estimate that 4% of all college students are 56 inches tall. In the more sophisticated approach, we combined what we know about the sample we examined with what we understand about the normal distribution. When we combine these two pieces of information, we get a more accurate estimate of the number of students of various heights.